Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics on a Tuesday night in the financial markets. And you can see, as you probably were well aware today, the price of silver was down a bit yet again, although Kitco was down for a while too. So nice to see our familiar Kitco charts are back up and running. And here in the green line, that's today's price chart. You see it was around 23.40, then... Uh, had a couple dips, rebounded a little bit, and closing the day around 2340-ish, let's call it. Interesting because you see the headlines here. The stock market was roaring again as the markets cheered Janet Yellen being picked for the Treasury. So if that means that the stock market should be up, I'm assuming because more money printing, why gold and silver would be down. Uh, again, not following the pattern that one might think, um, but is quite normal for gold and silver and the financial markets. Uh, Yellen, uh, what is she going to do uh, in the treasury? Probably an extension of what she did in the Fed, which is facilitate the printing of money. Um, and whatever happened to that independence between the White House and the Federal Reserve, now we have former Fed chair women becoming treasury secretary so uh why not just make one institution run the whole darn thing and stop pretending at some point but um anyway in case you needed a reason to feel better about gold and silver while the price was down then <laughs> there you go more money printing on the way obviously that does not come as a big surprise now over to the shares today, you can see basically anything with silver in the name got thumped pretty good as silver was down, uh, let's call it 30 cents in the day if you're measuring by SLV. Although you see First Majestic actually had a pretty strong day up three and a half percent. You can see that here. I think a big part of the reason why is that they were added as a buy this is from Stansbury Research mentioning one of our favorite silver bulls is joining the Fave Five. And um, I guess you can go to Stansbury Research to see more about that, but obviously they do have quite a wide reach. And um, as you can see here, now they are recommending uh, First Majestic, New Pacific, Silvercrest, Mag, Fortuna Silver, um, so good news for First Majestic. Glad to see the uh, word is getting out there. As you guys know, I'm a fan of them and what they're doing. And hopefully, I'm going to reach out and see if we can get Keith back on the show in December as we celebrate all of the great things in the silver market. And obviously, First Majestic, one of the biggest silver companies, and certainly one that I'm expecting to do well as the price of silver rises. Interesting story. I know some of you saw Bix made a couple of videos about this, but Hershey revealed as big trader that Royal, the New York Cocoa Futures, won't get into the minutia. I'm far from an expert on this, but I did think it was interesting. Basically, you had conditions in the market that left Hershey. Let's see if we can get that quote. Um basically was going out and buying, aggressively buying to take this Cocos push the spot contract up. And where is that uh, key quote there? I apologize for this. But basically they were wondering whether they were going to be able to get what they needed. And that Hershey is on a cocoa buying spree to record premium over the next month. So but still this similar situation that I've wondered, will that happen in silver where one of these industrial users who simply needs silver is rather price insensitive is going to say at some point, all right, well, we have to get our silver. So we'll go out, buy whatever we can. Dead Butler's talked about that a lot. Uh, he thinks that some of the turnover on the COMEX could be a sign of that. Which on one hand, I would agree. On the other hand, just it's been there for a while. Um, what would be the spark point when something is about to happen? Don't know that yet, but certainly will keep you posted. So 
anyway, you can read more about the uh, chocolate saga that's going on out there. And a couple more stories. This is not going to be the longest video tonight. A little bit of a headache today, but wanted to come here and give everybody the news. I thought this was interesting. JP Morgan dominates the gold market with record 1 billion precious metals revenue. So here's JP Morgan, criminal precious metals desk, criminal enterprise, according to the JP Department of Justice. Pays a 900 million fine, but I guess that's okay if you make a billion. And I don't know, I understand this is just the Reuters headline, but JP Morgan dominates the gold market, especially given what Bart Chilton said about how they were controlling a large portion of the market um, over the concentration limits. Uh, but now JP Morgan has dominated, growing its share of the market. So did they mention anything about how this bank was just fined in here? Let's see. Um, no, just seems like talking about how they're dominating the market. Um, does anybody else have a problem with that? I mean, again, fine, criminal enterprise, but let's let them dominate the market and just pass along as if that's the latest great financial news of the day. So, um, Again, my guess is they look at these fines as a cost of doing business. Whether they're involved in some of the moves in the market like this one or the others that we see so routinely, uh, it's kind of hard to say. I don't have access to that data. Sure wish I did, but maybe the CFTC will be calling any day now. So anyways, we will continue on here. Let's get that pop-up ad there. Yeah, and you can see Janet Yellen seeing her focus on fixing the economy and not politics. Well, I thought she was gonna fix the economy when she was the Fed chairwoman, thought the economy was strong and robust and everything was great. Um, now Jerome Powell says we can't pay off debt or unwind the balance sheet while things are weak. But if it was great, especially during this time when Yellen was in there where we were all told about how strong it was. Uh, of course, that was not the time to pay these things off, which is probably why Rob McEwen, who I actually met in San Francisco a couple of years ago, was talking about gold's price potential north of $5,000. Uh, and what does Rob say here? When you look at the response to fighting COVID, it's not one country or a small group of countries, it's global. Monetary expansion has been enormous. In addition, debt loads are much greater. So I think the possibility of a much higher price than $5,000 is very real. Um, I'd frankly agree with him. I mean, again, I know there's no timeline on here. So I don't know if we're going to see that before Christmas. But to me, perhaps even more than anything specific to gold or silver, what seems clear is that no matter what happens, the Fed is going to print. And then when that doesn't work, they will print more. And despite people like me and other Austrian economists saying why, no matter how much they print, they will just continuously want to print more. They'll just print more. They won't stop. Now I can understand if you're saying like, all right, well, most things, you know, you stop, take a break and calibrate. Obviously that's not the way monetary policy is done. So I think Rob McEwen will be right in due time. I'm going to stay with my best guess that we will see some binary kind of like they'll sit or the prices will sit around where they are now. And then at some point we'll see some pretty big jumps. I mean, when it gets to 3000 shoots right to four or 5,000, how close we are to that. Oh man, I do not know. Although again, if you can take away the need to know when it happens, at least to me, all the conditions guaranteeing that it's eventually going to happen are very well in place. So anyway, should be interesting to see how this all goes over the next coming years. Another sign here that I thought was kind of interesting, and I know gets some metals fans a little frosty, but see Bitcoin is back up to $19,000. Now, is there a correlation between Bitcoin and gold and silver? I would guess that over the longer term, there will be. 
Uh, I think these are complementary assets. And both of them, uh, I imagine the day there's some sort of fracture in the dollar, China says, screw off, we're not taking these things anymore, or something like that, some sort of Lehman-like event. My guess is that the metals and cryptos will both soar higher quite a bit at that time. Um, is it possible that Bitcoin would be foreshadowing when something is coming down the financial system? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say so, but again, at this point, I guess these things could unfold anyway and just see what happens. Uh, interesting to see it very close to that 2017 high. So I'm sure anybody out there with some Bitcoin is feeling happy today as it's up 5% in the last 24 hours. Um, one last note before we wrap up for tonight. Um, Silver Sands, who you have seen on the show, and Keith Anderson going to be joining us hopefully next week. A quick update on their Virginia Silver project in Argentina. Um, the meter drill program, uh, 2,500 meter drill program is well underway, focusing on untested or minimally tested epithermal silver veins. First six holes have been completed, and a total of 734 samples are at the lab. So uh, I will be interested to see how things come back there, but making progress in Argentina, that's one of the sites that I am hoping to go see later this year. So we will see how that goes. And again, hopefully Keith will be able to tell us more about that on the show next week. And then the last note, just before we wrap up uh, again, if you'd like these email, these videos delivered straight to your email box, you can go right there, put your name and email. And that way you'll make sure that you get all of the updates as we follow this incredible financial market saga that's going on with Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Janet Yellen, who knows who will be inserted into this next, but I'll tell you what, I will be keeping you posted. So with that said, gonna wrap up for tonight. Hope you're having a great evening out there and I will see you again soon.